a welcome back to another episode from Life on Living Well. This week, I have something totally different for you guys, and I call it Joseph. Yes, I sense that when I was writing this essay, it was a bit more a reflective topic but it's something that I feel like one or two people might be able to take something from it. So the topic I have for you this week, I call it Joseph. What an extraordinary woman being Joseph is. I love the story of a man called Joseph from the line of Hebrew. So you might wonder what he's trying to say or bring from the Joseph. But if you have five to ten minutes, you won't be asking that question anymore. You will be looking to what trait of Joseph do you have in yourself or what trait of Joseph you may be able to develop in yourself. So find time to listen to this. So let's get started. So the topic uh, for you today is Joseph and I do like to give you a big snapshot the meaning of the name and the person called Joseph who is it? why is it his name is big enough to make a podcast about but let's get started again so what an extraordinary woman being I love the story of a man called Joseph from the line of April. Today, I do like to share with you the trait and the quality that are already missing or not embraced by our current generation, which I feel strongly that is actually what we need most right now. First, being called Joseph symbolizes increase. But it comes with loads of life challenges. If your name is Joseph, people might only see the great things that you went on to achieve. But behind every those great things that you achieve, there's enormous challenges that you have to overcome. So, firstly, Joseph is derived from the Latin form of Greek called Yosef, but from Hebrew name, it means Yosef, which means he will add. So this person with the name, before they born, it looked like they've been predestined, that whatever comes to their life, they will add it as part of their life experience, whether up or down. This individual life has been set since he was born that whatever comes in his path, that he will add either a pleasant or unpleasant experiences. But today, I want to talk about outstanding qualities Joseph had demonstrated despite the difficulties, challenges, up and down, especially sibling rivalries, envyness, Jealousy, pure evils from total stranger. All these things, you and I face them every day. Choices to do one thing over the other. Choices to go left over the right. Choices to be authentic or fake it. All of these things is me and you face one by one every day. But how did you just have money to walk the same rope that you are walking right now so the light about his character the lie about his identity they took a lot away from him but one thing they have no mind to take away from him is authenticity so after carefully review and evaluate what such a person is Joseph, I've come to conclusion that 
if you manage to work on these five traits not only that you'll be able to overcome some of the life challenges because whether you like it or not you will face it at one point and once you overcome it how did you transcend those experiences into a more positive productive and better person so let's let's examine the five qualities of joseph there's a lot but i feel like personally i think that in order to be functioning in the world right now these five qualities will make a enormous difference to your life to your business to your relationship to your personal development and embracing these qualities will make a change in your life and if you already have these qualities learn to continue to sharpen it don't just leave it and hoping for the best or luck to grow it work on it intentionally to make you to make it more become better so let's examine the five qualities one by one number one calculating not in a evil way not in a taking advantage of others or exploiting others but using your free intelligence your feelings your intellect and power of your reflective mind to evaluate your goals whether for short time or long time it is important to do that because you have 24 hours in a day if you don't careful you will be bombarded with a lot of distractions distractions for invitation to think that has no value to your life distractions from TV, distraction from friends, distraction from other people's gossiping, distraction from your own self. When you feel bored, how do you distract yourself? So always have the ability to prioritize the long time over the short time. There was a great philosopher that said, start to do difficult things when it's easy. And it's a simple wisdom, but it's not easy to practice. Most people don't pray until they have pray until they have problem. Most people don't reach out to their friends until they need them. Most people don't spend time with their family until they have no time to spend. So do the difficult things when it's easy, because the thousands of journey we start with just a simple step. So learn to be more calculating in your actions environment you find yourself will influence whether you get to where you wanted to be or not Cal- been calculating how you spend your time how you spend your more resources your money your wisdom your knowledge so being prioritize degree of importance compared to momentary pleasure which lead to impossible so most people can only think about what they want right now but step by step they are taking away from what they need for the long time so it's like you have a savings account if you keep spending it and you don't put any money there then you have nothing left to take from it so let's move to number two number two become wise it's not simple but I actually believe that almost every human being have a degree of wisdom in them it just based on the spectrum and what I mean by spectrum is that one person perspective might closer to the reality than the others it depends how much you have invested to transcending all your experiences and become a better observant of your environment and others and embellish yourself with other people's great work like books like story like event like research and helping you to become more making me better and quality decisions going forward in your life so number two learn to become learn to improve your wisdom ability allow your instinct 
to develop to a level of knowing that you no longer over depend on your mind on your emotion alone your instinct becoming a engine that helping you to facilitate your decision making it's not necessarily that you make a fast decision or it just means that you make a better decision you will be able to make a decision by just knowing even though you have no evidence or fact to back it up at that moment but you just know So embrace your past, experience, be a vigilant and observant of others. So how you develop your wisdom is to embrace your past, learn from it, observe it and let it go and take and observe from everything around you. Use it as a means of understanding and transcend that knowledge into improving your life and the life of others. So number three, patient. This world, everyone, people, it's easy to say, but it's really hard to practice. Because to become a patient person, you must have enormous compassion. You cannot have anger in you and also remain patient. Impossible. It's like you're holding a fire in your hand. To exercise a degree of patience is driven by different passion of energy, compassion. Caesar put it better than I would do. Caesar once said to people that want to fight for him. And one other thing he mentioned to them is that almost all men can volunteer to die for any cause. Whether defend their family, defend their property, defend their they are uh, their pride they are ready to die for that but hardly can you find any man or any person that can tolerate pain with patience this is why we borrow this is why we borrow money to buy the thing to impress people we did they even like just because we cannot be patient enough to let it be we wanted to feel good right now and we need to do something about it right now. We wanted to eat something that we shouldn't, but we can't wait, but then we do. And that brings more suffering to our life. So, how do you develop patience? Again, start small. Start small. You want to do a 10,000 walk, but you've never done just two kilometer walk before doing it one might be too scary for you break it down instead of do it one day do it in five days do it in two days do it in three days able to know yourself and able to take a challenge that giving you more courage you don't want to do things that's too simple to do you won't really find motivation to do it. And you don't want to do things that are so difficult to do. So you won't really find courage to do it. At the same time, you become discouraged. So, learn to be patient. Start small and become, become consistent with your effort. And you, what, what will happen if you do that? Gradually, it will increase. This year, in particular, I've tried many startup small projects, and it's amazing after a few months how this has increased enormously beyond my understanding. Because I was trying to practice what I preach, and I was trying to demonstrate that it's actually work. So start small. Start with everything. Start small. And you will see how increasingly increase himself. So that moves number four. Competence. Today we have so many specialists. You have people that went to the different academic to have a different qualification and they have a big title on their names. They are just a specialist in that field. 
you have a lawyer, you have a teacher, you have a doctor, you have an engineer, you have a computer programmer, you have all these people. These people are all I call a specialist. But the future, we need people that are generalists. So in the next of 15 years time, I suspect that the world we just not we, we have so much of specialists that the world we need something more than that. We need a generalist. So perhaps that's why there's a lot of driving or high yield in the market today. We have artificial intelligence that are coming fast and thick, and you will see more of this in ed sector a lot, where majority one third of the surgeon will be replaced by IE. Not only in healthcare, I actually believe that it will revolutionize the society like internet does. But before then, the people that we still have the upper end are people I call generalists. So what makes somebody a generalist is someone that prepared to get their hand dirty, try to get knowledge of a lot of things, get knowledge in different areas on top of their speciality. It is good to develop a speciality, it is good to choose something that you're really good at because in practical, that is what our current world needs now. But one day will come that a generalist will also be a, an advantage. So Joseph is one I call a generalist. When he was a housekeeper, he was the best housekeeper. When, when, was, when he was a special advisor, he was the best special advisor. When he became a visionary, he was the best one among them. When he became a philosopher, he was the best philosopher. And finally, when he, when he owed the second highest post in the land, he became a great administrator of the places. He have a foresight for a short time and foresight for a long time. So what make him stand out? He gave 100% to everything he decided to do. If he decided to be a chef, he would try so much to become the best he could be of that, to become a chef. And it's time to move to the next one to try different things. He also give everything to it. So folks, Develop a competency in whatever area you find yourself doing. If your job is to drive a van, be the most safe guiding driver. Be the good person that can make people in, in your car, in your vehicle, more relaxed. Bring joy to their life. So whatever you chose to do, develop competency in it. The caring and kindness is yours. Develop a competency in it. So, so that takes me to the last part of the qualities. So I'm, which is bringing the podcast to the end. Forgiveness. Whether you speak or not either way people will still find faults in you if you decided to remain quiet if you decided not to offend anybody if you decided not to speak to anybody someone will still get someone will still get offended so meaning that there's no reason why we should not forgive anyone as much as it's difficult to forgive some crime some some bad behavior, some event that happened to anyone in the past. In order to be completely free, forgiveness is not for the person that have done you wrong. Forgiveness is for you to be free. Because there is so much power in freedom. Because when you are free of all the yokes and bondings that you've been carrying, your mind is so free to create new life for yourself. That doesn't make the person that have done you really nasty, bad in the past, get away from the bad thing. It just allow you not to continue to punish you, punishing yourself from things that have happened to you. So Joseph finds strength in forgiveness. So 
when Nah come to his own sibling, he was able to forgive them. Because in truth, we we offend someone in, in the if you have never offended anybody now, write it down, you will offend someone. And if you can't forgive anyone, how will you ask that person to forgive you? So I trust you will find yourself in yourself. If you do, integrate all these traits, all these five qualities, and see amazing changes that happen in your life. And if you're already integrated this in your life already, and if this is part of your character already, begin to connect it with everything that you do and see the changes in your life and the life of people that you come across. So I hope this particular podcast helps someone this week. And if you have any question, you can always write to me at life info at life for living one dot info. Once again, you can always send your email to me or ask any question about the platform. Our website is www.lifeforlivingwell.com dot info and we release the podcast once a week and my name once again is richard whatever you do have an amazing week and please stay safe thank you